Good morning everyone. So today we're at a Jeep and it's the Jeep Cherokee. It's a 2006 and it's a diesel, 2.8 diesel, common rail diesel. So a couple of issues with this thing. So I'll, I'll take you. <laughs> First issue is uh, trying to communicate with the scan tool. So I put the snap on machine on it, no go. I put the hotel machine on it, no go. I then put the launch machine on it. Oh yeah, we could get into the codes with that. But when I went into the live data, which I'll show you, it was utter gibberish, utter rubbish. So actually I got a load of Roddy's Ansel machine, the cheapest at the bunch, and it done a far better job than the rest of the machines. Well, it managed to get into OBD. So I'll put an edit. So we had a few codes when we came to this thing in the first place. There was... There was the EGR fault code, and then there's another one for... ...a fuel leak, large leak detected. And then we've got these lost comms with the anti-lock braking module. We'll ignore them, ignore them at the moment. So, the exhaust EGR valve, we're trying to bi-directionally control that within the let me see actuation tests let's see and i can't actually there's it seems to be through two things there's an egr throttle valve and the egr actuator so it must be a throttle valve to allow the gas or be within the air intake actually in fact it'll probably be this i'll take you and show you that imagine that thing there is what they're deeming is the egr throttle valve i'm just assuming at this point so Three wire job, more than likely. If I can plug it and see if it codes generated in there, we can try that. And then the other thing is this large fuel leak. This thing has an extended crank time, and you can see someone's already been it. I think they're trying to solve this problem, so they've put one of these one way valves in. So I don't know if that's on the return or on the feed, but you're all usually better to put them in the return line to hold it up. So, another thing I've seen on this before, we've seen on a Chrysler, someone had not uh, tightened up that bleed screw there. And uh, the filter looks a little bit tatty, so I think we're going to change the fuel filter on it. But, with the, with the lack of live readings or data, what we're going to do is go right for the fuel pressure sensor and see what the rise time is like on this. So it's great, I think a good rise time would be just over a second. Or, well, I can't even remember, what is it, under a... Either just under or just over a second, but this thing's got extended crank, so... I'll let you hear it cranking over. See what you think. So we need to get the light out in that CGR valve, and we need to put, see what the extended, what's up with the extended crank, so listen to this. Oh, started a bit better that time. Let's go for this time. And that typical. It's starting all right the now, but we have had extended cranks. Anyway, so let's go back. I'll show you this information. Read data stream. So we got, just just pick battery volts. Look at this. We're showing four four battery four volts. A bit longer that time. So rubbish. Yeah, we'll take that off. Yeah, let me see what else. Engine RPM. Okay. We're idling at 200 RPM and 25, so that's only with one PID selected. So you can see our idle RPM is about 700. So I don't know what this up with this thing. But the trouble identifying this module, oh, they're painful. So there, there's, there's the VIN code there. It's a JI-8. So JI-8 is the chassis. But uh, when we get into the guts of this thing, I'll, I'll bring you back along. But Chrysler, well Chrysler Jeep, oh, these old things, terrible, cheers. The other thing I don't like about this, there's a terrible clicking noise coming from inside this alternator. You hear it? I 
think it's all in it anyway. But the alternator is charging okay. We're getting 14 volts across the battery and the AC ripple is only like 25 millivolts, so negligible, but funny noise. Right, moving on. Let me get light on the subject. So we had suspected that down there was what the car was determined was the EGR throttle valve. So what I done was, we took the multi-plug off, that looks like a VAG multi-plug, so I'll just explain to you, so we've got 12 volts in this pin, which is the red, what colour is that already, red, blue, red and blue, red and blue, and then we come along to the third wire, what's that, can they brownie type, uh, brown, brownie type colour, that's the signal feedback to the ECU. Now we're really up against it because we can't look at any live data. So what I done was I just took my little test light there and grounded it and put it into that pin. And that's when we generated this code. I put that the torch off. EGR airflow throttle control circuit low. So our original code was 1140. That meant it was high, so it meant it was open circuited. And if us grounding that down, it's now saying it's low. So we know that the problem is within that valve because the circuit is no complete around the valve and it's leaving it open circuited so we need this throttle actuator control valve now i normally say you don't need this but you do because one you need it for the engine to stop to starve it of oxygen like we've seen the bmw's and two you need it for the exhaust gas recirculation and it's painful that it has this potentiometer within the thing so it's got a potentiometer and a motor because it's got it's got a 12 volt supply. Aye, that'd be right in that. So we need to get one of them. But that is no our problem. That is no our slow crank start problem. Uh, it's still slow to start. So we'll get it into the workshop and we'll we'll test that. But fuel filter first. If that doesn't cure it, clear lines to see where we're getting air about, and uh, take it there. Cheers. So here we go. So we removed the filter. And as we were taking the old filter off, you know, I'll let you see the old filter. Here it's in the here it's in the bench. So you can see it's got a rubber ring round it, right? So that, that comes with the filter. But when we remove that filter, lo and behold, another rubber ring fell out as well. So I see it's stuck there, I need to get out with a screwdriver. So here is the new filter. So what I think's happened, when someone's changed the diesel filter, they've left the old rubber ring in. So in, a, in effect, they've had two rubber rings, two ceiling rings. So I think that's probably what's causing the air leak in this issue. So we're going to get that one out, prime it back up, take it for a run, and we're going to monitor, because I can't get any good data off it, we're going to monitor it with the scope through the fuel pressure sensor. And we'll break out the, the Veris for the first time uh, using its scope function. So we'll let you see that. But uh, there you go. Always start with the basics, first of all. An extra O ring. And get the thing out. Sure, it's an extra O ring because you would think it was sitting at the recess bit. Look at that. But try that first of all. What we're, what we're going to do here is take it a run and because if I've got a lack of access to scan data we're just going to monitor oh, put that light off my new light's getting in the road we're just going to monitor the voltage so you can see there it's 1.4 with it the uh, idling and I'm into the the middle pin and that sensor there that's the fuel pressure sensor Right, Roddy, will you crank it here and we can measure the rise time? So, the thing I'll go back to rest, and I'm sure this goes down to half a volt uh, with it, without any pressure in it. Let's see. We're just about there. Ah, that'll do, Roddy. You want to just crank it over then, Roddy? So. That'll do, Roddy! 
So what we can do, the various you always zoom, you go in tight to come back out, so we do this. So we'll bring that thing along. That's what I want. Doctor. So there's there's the bit that we went back to engine off. Now there's the crank along there, so we'll bring this along here. And we'll zoom in. So we can then look at that between when it started cranking to the rise time, so should be about a second. So we'll bring in our cursors. Show. Back. Bring that along there. See, that's the start. And this is when we finally get started. I agree with that. So let's see in. What's the delta there, Roddy? One second. One second. So that's no bad actually. The new. That's it. And the filter's just been changed. Although it did sound a wee bit. I can't even remember what the figure is. Is it one second? Delay? Anyway, we'll save that. In fact, well, the easiest way to do with this thing is just to take a picture. And I can put this in the edit. And we'll go file, save all frames, here and name. Is this Jeep ready? Jeep. Save. Okie dokie. Not cheap, Jeep. <laughs> That's right. No, hi, that's right. We priced that VAT, that throttle valve up there. 270 quid plus VAT. That'll not be happening. Anyway, we're going to take it a run and monitor live voltage. Because I'm sure when I had this on a Chrysler before, I'm sure when it got to about 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, that, that was the code setting criteria for a large leak. And it cut the engine. So let's see how we go. So there you go, Roy's right? got to crank it over. We're going to run in the country. Oh, a bit longer that time now. So, we're okay at the moment. That thing, multimeter. That's good for things like this. It doesn't need to be a, this is not a fast signal. It's a fairly slow moving signal, this. But, oh, me. Ah, me. All right. What's what the matter? So I'd imagine when we give it four welly, uh, full welly will be about four, over four volts anyway. If it, if it ha anything happens, I'll let you see it's a long run. I put, I put the, just use the graphing multimeter and put it on a 10 second time base. So it's a nice long capture. So you can see there, it never, about 1.3. Well, let's see if we can measure this. Uh, the thing never had a problem with us, so up to here. There's a kind of average when it's down low at idle. Oh, there you go. 1.1 volt. So that's fine. So, as I say, plenty of pressure there. Up the top, and maxed out at 3.8 volts. So, that's good. Mm, so I wonder if it's been that that filter at the end of the day it's caused this problem, but there we go. If it does it again, I'll show you. But I know the code setting criteria because I went into this before for a Chrysler. As soon as it's seen under 0 0.8 volts, that's when it cut the power, went into default mode. So this one's certainly not doing that. So there you go. Anyway, we'll see how we're going with it. Cheers.